that's the name I gave it to this brush. Everyone, welcome back to my art channel. Today we have something special. We have a tutorial, an art challenge, and a demonstration. Without further ado, let's buckle up and get started. So here is a portrait I drew with one brush. And these are the things about brushes. They are tools for artists to use. I find there are two practitioners. One dedicates their effort to create the tools they need to produce the work. And these people very focus on finding the right tools. And once they find them, they will produce great work with the right tools they use. And the second category of people, we don't like to look for the tools. What we do is we practice to get better at using one tool. We do some customization with that one tool. And then we try to use that one tool to produce all the work. So we are lazy in finding the tools, but we work harder in uh, become better and using that tool. So what I'm trying to show here is the second category of people um, where we're looking for that one very versatile brush in Procreate. So this is not a default brush. This is a customized brush. Everything is from the Procreate library. You don't have to download any special images um, and it's very easy to create. Let me start with a blank canvas. So the brush I'm looking for is that I, basically I want to use the, the tail angle and control of the pen pressure to produce a wide range of um, ink. So let me show you. So here is this thin and this is the sharp and um, low opacity. And then if I want to do dark and large to cover a large area, I just apply more pressure and then like, and then I can do tilt, hard, large, light. I see I can do sharp lines. If you want to do sharp lines, you can do sharp lines. And then if you want to do soft water effect, you just apply very gently. So if you have a brush that can achieve this, or if I want to get a very sharp line, I set the tip to low. I got a solid line or large tip, then I can do some smooth blending effect. So this is what I was looking for in my brush to achieve the results I want. So this is a very versatile brush and which allow me to paint this entire image with one brush. So we start with a brand new brush. You do that by clicking the plus. So let me just show you real quick uh, spacing. So normally I, I have no real preference on this. Of course, so we just want a, a solid line. I watch one YouTube video, the YouTuber recommended 10% and that's uh, what I follow. 10%. Uh, we're going to set both the jitter and fall off to zero. And if you're wondering what jitters do 
um, or fall off, what fall off does. Um, you can try it, uh, but we don't use this. Stabilization, um, I don't use this that much. I set this to 20% and I set the motion filtering to 30%. Basically what I'm trying to do is to imitate a real life um, drawing because sometimes I find that when I draw on the surface of the iPad, it's, um, it's very slippery because it's a glass um, and it creates some jitters um, that I would normally wouldn't create that um, with a pen and paper. So I didn't like that. So I use some stabilization to filter that out which 20% of stabilization and 30% for uh, motion filtering is something I feel about right. But this is something that you can tweak it for yourself if you need more system with stabilization, then you can turn it up or or use my recommended setting, 20% for stabilization and 30% for motion filtering. And let's move on to the next setting, um, taper. So I do want to have the, the sharp tips. So that's why I set the um, pressure taper size, pressure. So don't need to worry about touch paper. That's for finger drawing. We use a um, pen. Then shape. So this is where the fun parts come in. Um, I use infrared, infrared oil. It's my favorite. So they give you some kind of texture. Um, then I reorient the uh, brush to uh, 90 degrees. They give me a little sharper lines. Then the next setting is for grain. I use, so this one you have a little bit more flexibility. Um, so I basically you just want a little bit texture makes the um, makes the brush not just a solid color. So that little texture gave the um, brush a little artistic touch. Um, so for me, I tried out a few, but um, I think the scrap is it's so far the one I'm using. Um, Green movement zero, scale zero, room zero. I don't remember why these this has these settings have to do with the texture of the brush. Um, you can experiment with it, but uh, I believe my yep. Everything zero, blend mode, multi, blend mode multiply, then improve filtering. Um, basically, it's the default. Okay, rendering, this is important. Um, the default comes in with the intense glaze. Um, I like to use uniform glaze, so it tends to blend better. I like this one. You can see intense glaze um, doesn't give you that low opacity if I use um, light pen pressure, but if you use a uniform glaze, it lets you do really low opacity drawings, which is the one I like. And bleeding, I didn't touch that. Burn, the, burn edges mode, I set this to normal. 
I don't remember why, but I just know that my brush that's set to normal for rendering. Um, I know why, because this brush that I customized that was actually, I used a duplicate of another brush and then I changed the settings, but now recreating the brush from scratch and some of the settings was kind of left over from the brush I duplicate, duplicated. So we just um, set it to my other brush. So when mix this category of settings is allow you to achieve more watercolor. Um, I think you can try it. So basically if you turn on the dilution, it, it's none of this is the setting for us. So I set everything to zero. Let's make sure we're setting. Yep, everything's to zero. Uh, I don't do anything with color dynamics, but this is something fun to try. Basically, if you set the hues or saturations in a one stroke of pen, you can have different colors. Um, but for me, I like to have more control over what I do. So I don't like to give out controls to the computer on this one. So turn everything default. Um, dynamics, I believe, well, sorry, I had, I do have to check what I said for dynamics. Oh, nothing, zero, so no change. Dynamics, uh, Apple Pencil, so this one opacity set to max, bleed is, so opacity, so this is just for the pressure. Um, wait, I need to go check. Oh, actually, so the, the reason I set it this way is because I do want a, a wide range um, of, of um, control from me applying different pen pressure. So when I set the size to max, that gave me the largest if I press hard or I can press lightly, then it gave me um, skinny, skinny stroke. Then opacity to max so basically give you from almost no opacity to 100% opacity, which is what I like to use. Um, and that flow, flow basically it's the rate of change. If you set it to default, basically just go to max faster. Then if you set it to max and this one property, this is more of a, so the top category is the, um, the preview and then the brush behavior. Um, so minimum is always at zero, but the maximum for this maximum size, you, you can set different sizes. So that basically is this bar. Um, the higher maximum size, this brush will become larger. And property, I do not know what this setting does. Uh, but this one, I set it to 300 and minimum, I believe this is one. It's one zero, it doesn't really matter. Material, no change. And for this one, made by Keenan, title brush, universal brush. and sign here and that's it for our custom brush so hope you like this uh, tutorial and um, this for some experienced artists probably will find this helpful and if you um, already been doing great work with the physical art material and now you want to get into digital illustration and 
say you have an iPad and now you just downloaded Procreate and want to start creating. And I think this is more of a tutorial for this type of people, um, this type of artists where they have more understanding of the, uh, the effect they want to achieve. And now they just need the tools to accomplish that. Um, when I was, I'm very lazy with brushes. I have been using the default brushes for longest of time, I think three years. This is my fourth year doing digital arts. So in the previous, just very recently, I started to really get a better understanding of the brush settings, the brushes specifications. But before that, I was looking for the brush that's gonna give me the, like when I was sketching, I use this. Then when I'm ink, I use this. Then um, when I'm doing blending, I use airbrushes. But now I'm glad I can say that I have actually educated, study a little bit on the settings. And now I've found the, uh, the best brush for me and hope this tutorial helps you. Let me go ahead and show you the, um, the time lapse of how I created this drawing. So this is not like complete perfect. This is more like a demonstration of how I use one brush to render this portrait. You can see the, the hairs, um, and it, it's not a hundred percent replica, but I think this is 90, 95%. I don't think I will show you the, uh, the normal speed version because it's the total took me three hours. So I don't want you to sit through three hours. So I'll do some editing, but you can just take my word for it. I only use one brush. I use the brush and also I use the smudge tool. The smudge is very basic. I just use the default soft blend and I use the eraser. Um, and you can, and I can be honest with you, I was doing a no undo challenge. Um, I think I did undo it twice in the entire process just because I couldn't help. Um, it was too easy. I set my um, iPad to double tap to undo and I was doing the whole thing. I remember I double tapped just out of um, habit twice. Um, so, you have to forgive me on that. And I was also going for a no warp pen. Oh, sorry, no liquify. Um, Procreate is called liquify. Um, but uh, in the end, I was very close. Um, I should have checked the form sooner, but um, I was just in the Zoom and started going with it. So I didn't do the mirror. Uh, flip the image. Then later on, when once I'm fully rendered, uh, everything's done. Then, and I remember I need to mirror my image, and I see, oh God, <laughs> yeah, here's the mistake. Um, then I just, well, let me just use Liquify and <laughs> correct the mistake, and then finish with it instead of uh, actually erase and redraw on top of the image. So, um, so that's the challenge. It's um, one pen, well, one brush, no, uh, almost no undo, and almost no uh, liquefy challenge. And actually, I also just uh, use mainly just on the one layer. Um, so, I think uh, for young artists, um, if you think in order to produce a result, you need a great uh, you need um, many, many brushes or you need many, many layers. I can tell you, uh, you don't. Um, this is again. also, I do want to talk about why I chose uh, this um, reference photo. It's because the, um, so this is a, the original is an AI generated image. And I'm not here to talk about the ethics of using AR art, just talk about I'm um, using this reference photo because this reference photo has a combination of really, really high def skin rendering. So that requires some re really sharp applications of brushes. And then you have the, the watercolor effect on the surroundings. So this is really cool that I can use one brush to produce the, the sharp high def 
scan rendering, the focal point is the face. So once you get the face done, um, and then the the remaining people, the viewers is not going to really focus on the uh, did, did I get this hair stream right or if the uh, the patterns in the the shirt is wrong, that's not really important. Um, so just really the focal point is the face. So get the face really really dialed in. I was explaining why I use this reference photo. It's just because it has a combination of uh, high def sharp rendering and uh, color watercolor effect. Um, and that's it for today's tutorial. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you learned something for today's episode. Like always, a like and subscribe for turn on the notification bell for future content. This is my new YouTube journey. So just um, be patient with me. I'm pretty happy with it. So I do daily sketch shorts. And then I plan on doing one tutorial a week. And then I live stream my practices uh, throughout the week. And this is it. And thank you so much. And see you next time.